the panel, the discussion, an objective and impartial view of the issues of interest to you. Nation Beat is on now. Hello, good day. I'm Winston Springer Jr. here at the GIS Studios in Castry, St. Lucia. Welcome to this special interview. I'm joined by Cedric Leibert, Ambassador Leibert, former telecommunications minister over in St. Kitts Nevis. And also, he needs to do introductions to Calix George, also a former minister for telecommunications right here in St. Lucia. Uh, so Calix, Ambassador Leibert, thanks for joining us. First question, why are we here? I know it has to do with the Eastern Caribbean Telecommunications Regulatory Authority, and you guys had something to do with that in terms of liberalizing the telecom space in which we inhabit right here in the OECS. So, Calix, you have the floor. Well, thank you very much um, for having me and for Cedric. First of all, we are here because Cedric has decided that he's giving me an award for my contribution to OECS liberalization uh, in, you know, in the past, um, probably two decades now. And, and so uh, Cedric was, was of the view that we should have a little chat uh, about how this whole thing came about mm -hmm. and um, uh, kind of a review of how did we get to the position that we are now in telecommunications. So he will tell you why it is that he's given me that award. Go ahead. Ambassador Lyman. Well, first, um, I must say to you that the St. Kitts Nevis Labour Party, leading up to the 1995 general elections, um, felt that the monopoly of cable and wireless in St. Kitts and Nevis um, is really a hindrance and progress to the development of St. Kitts and Nevis. And therefore, we thought that we should move towards liberalization of telecoms. And therefore, after elections of 1995, I was appointed Minister of Communication Works and Public Utilities. And out of that, we were able to have meetings in the OECS, and that matter um, was discussed. And uh, that is why Calix George was elected as the chair and I was deputy chair and since then we have been working together. The same yeah. thing happened here. And the same thing precisely. So, so Calix, almost, my question. almost the same thing happened here because um, in 1997 I think it was uh, the Labour Party um, and the Labour Party manifesto there was a portion that said that for us to diversify our yes. economy there was need to change the, the, the landscape for telecommunications. And so that is how it came about. So, so both St. Kitts, Nevis, and, and, and St. Lucia were about the same thing. The only difference was that in the case of St. Lucia, our telecom license with cable and wireless was nearing an end. Yes. Okay? Mm -hmm. So we're looking at a zeitgeist prevailing mood on the ground from a public policy level, yeah. and it aligned with sort of a philosophical bent from, the, from these Labour Party administrations which swept to victory yeah. during that period. It, 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 was, it, it was coincidental yeah. right, mm -hmm. that around that same period we had these kind of things. And of course the philosophies of Labour parties usually right. in, in the region are more or less uh, the same. Mm -hmm. So the thinking was that in our case, uh, and it was clearly expressed in our manifesto, that we were moving in the direction of changing the landscape and putting a platform by which we could diversify, particularly, like let us say, in, um, in financial services, okay? Yeah. Uh, uh, and the whole area of, of, of visa technology mm -hmm. for what you call call centers and all that kind of stuff, you know. So we're moving in, 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 in our part of the world, in St. In Lucia, a monocrop uh, so society, a monocrop uh, economy to a services sector. To a services sector. And that aligned with what was going yes. on in and the other countries, not the necessarily sector, from which, a monocrop. Once you economy. go into the services sector, that means that you need yeah. adequate communication. And telecommunications it. across all different spheres, yeah. including, as you said, financial services. Yes, yes. Whenever you get a wire, you yeah. use SWIFT, Society yeah. Yeah. Yeah, for yeah. Financial yeah. Um, Telecommunications. Yeah. That is a form of That's telecommunications. True. But before we could have gotten there, certain things had to happen. We couldn't just break the public policy or shape the public policy mold 
there was a little hurdle to overcome. <laughs> well, that hurdle? well what, what happened is that, uh, in, I, well, Cedric can talk for, for St. Kitts, but in our case, uh, we had um, to break the monopoly. Now, yeah. the first thing was to break the monopoly that Cable and Wireless had. And the second thing was to establish a proper telecoms policy. Yeah. Okay? For, for ourselves. Now, Cedric can talk about um, 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 what happened in St. Kitts. Yeah. But in our case in St. Lucia, we had, in the first instance, there was no telecommunications unit, for example, in the government of St. Lucia. Right. So what I did when I became the minister was to establish a public utilities unit. And I got Suku Augustine, who was... Uh, Mr. Truscott. Truscott. Mr. Truscott Augustine. Right. Yeah, mm -hmm. Rast the man. Mm -hmm. And brought him in as a technical officer. Okay? And Dr. Anthony was quite generous in establishing a new unit in the Ministry of Works. So then we started to study the whole issue of telecommunications. And so we decided to have a telecommunications policy for St. Lucia. Similarly, I think... Well, in St. Kitts, so what happened in St. Kitts at the same Saint time? In St. Kitts, um, first, uh, our license were all the way up to 2015. Wow. And um, we thought, as I've said, that was hindering us in moving forward because of the same moving in services. And when we checked the other islands in the OECS, they were basically the same, 2015 with the exception of St. Lucia. And um, it is out of that we thought that we should come together as an OECS group. And if you'd recognize that the OECS has had a platform in the past where we have all our own common dollar, and therefore we thought that it is a group that we can sit together and we can take decisions. And it is out of that we were able to sit down in the OECS and moving this matter forward, and we were able to. Yes. And so um, a prime example of cross. Yes, yes. Well, well it's of, a of, of functional unification, functional right. cooperation. cooperation. It's yeah. a beautiful case of mm. of the effects of a coming together. Right. And and OECS we bound up together, just like you have the um, central bank and so on and so forth. Telecom came right. together. So in our case, so what, how, with those what happened? Nice, mm -hmm. What happened is that we had to have harmonized policies. Yes. Ah. Yes. So we had our own, so um, they had their own and so on, but we all had to come together. You need uniformity. Uh, uniformity. So right. we came together after consultation in each of our countries yeah. on what should happen to telecoms in the future. And having established a policy element for each country, then we came together, harmonized the thing and put together for our uniform OECS telecommunications policy. No. Now, having done the policy, there are certain actions to take part, I mean to take place. Mm -hmm. So we had to have telecommunications acts. Yeah. So in each country, yeah. we had telecommunication acts, modernized telecommunications acts. So each country fashioning their own, but at the same time, we must have some sort of That's synergy correct. in terms right. of well, first, harmonizing we, so we harmonized the policies, yeah. and right. then, of course, the, the acts also were harmonized. Okay. We had to sell this to all of our prime ministers in the OECS. That's the first thing, where they came on board and supported us. Okay. In terms of the harmonization, we had to get our attorney generals to understand what we were going to do. And it is out of that the policies, the legislation, were discussed among the attorney generals after we were able to put our information together and handing it over to the attorney generals. So all of the, the legislation was the same except the name of the country and the other things along that line. But St. Kitts and Nevis had to put in St. Kitts and Nevis and St. Lucia had to put in St. Lucia on the document. And we were given some specific times to pass all of these legislation. And all this is a precursor to the that's regulatory correct. authority. Yes. But I, at, at the beginning, I want to start at the beginning, we spoke about a hurdle that needed to be overcome right here in St. Lucia, that 
that sort well, of the, the, test case. Yeah. And yeah. before that could have been replicated throughout the, the rest of the OECS. Yes, yes. Well, the major, the major thing, obviously, was cable and wireless because cable and wireless and fast electric communications owned the whole region yeah. mm -hmm. as far as... And when I say own... We're talking technically a, in we, terms of the spectrum. Everything, everything. It was more or less like, a, you know, the main kind of imperialistic... Um, <laughs> uh, um, well, a monopoly. Yeah. A more, euph monopoly. more euphemistic. So what, so what happened, for example, Cayman and Wireless had a, a, a monopoly yes. um, situation in all the islands, mm -hmm. and including Jamaica and Trinidad as well, and Barbados. Okay? Um, uh, incidentally, um, the region as a whole was interested, you know, so in fact we had things with Jamaica and so on, but after a while, as usual, um, well, the Jamaicans found that they were, you know, ahead of us and so on and so forth, um, and so they went and did their own thing and so on. But in the, when, in the end, we banded together and we had the best deal. Yes. So we overcome the, the cable and wireless hurdle, and, and it's important that today we, we understand what we're well, let me give put you it in a, context. Let me, let me, let me give because you some of the things we enjoy this today... A, it's a very long story of right. cable and wireless, because these guys were imperialists, right? <laughs> and they thought that they owned us, okay? We tell them, no, you can't do that, because things have changed. So what they did, for example, was that... Um, and I'll, I can give you some more details of, of how they exploited us in, in a while. Um, so they would come and in 2000, no, 1998, somewhere or 1990, yeah. just after we got into yeah. office and so on, since the, 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 the St. Lucia um, Telecoms agreement. agreement with Cable and Wireless is going to end in 2001, they came to us for an extension yes. of the existing agreement. So when they came to us for the extension of the, in, of the agreement, I said, no, 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 brother, we can't go through that. Thing. You're not going to have an extension and so on. Okay. So they, um, they tried to play tricks with the ministers. For example, in my case, they went above my head and went to the prime minister. Okay. And so the fellow was bombarding me for me to give him that, that extension of, of the thing. So I said, no, I have a long, nice letter which I had to write. I don't know if you want me to read it for you. <laughs> that would be, that's all right. That's huh? okay. That, that's but it's okay. a very long letter where I had to put him in his place. Oh, Lord. <laughs> because what he was trying to do is to bypass me as the minister yeah. and go to the prime minister. Yes. Negotiation tactics. Tactics, you know, you know, and so on. So I, 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 have, I had a couple. They did a lot of but that. suffice to say, we, we, we did overcome yeah. that. Over in St. Kitts, what, what was the situation there in terms of moving past the cable and wireless monopoly? The same thing Bravo? happened to him too. Uh, it was all through the islands. Um, right. In fact, um, I was, one time I was called and I was given a letter from the local agents in St. Kitts right. saying that there was a meeting in Barbados of all the prime ministers, right. and um, they had come to some agreement. None of us ministers were at that level and that meeting. Uh, when I received the letter, I said, wow, I need to first discuss this with my prime minister. And after he returned home, I, I met with him and I said, look, I've just received this letter from Cable and Wireless. And he said, Cedric, um, I am in support of the telecoms reform and please move in that direction. And that was all the discussion. The point I am making is that just as um, Calix has said, they were trying at every opportunity to see how they can break us and get ahead of us. But it's important that we note and underscore mm. the, the level of service we as a consumer was the, the the level of service afforded to the consumer yeah. at that point in time? Yeah. Mm. Not not to just talk about the the ironclad agreements yeah. with the, the likes of cable and wireless and a monopoly. Mm. Was that level of service reflective of a competitive market force no, 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 it wasn't. economy mm. whereby there's there's no. diversity, there is there are options, and the consumer is benefiting. So there's nothing. Could like you that. regale us with that? Z that period that, in time, there was what was the level of service? Well, I'll come to that in a while, but let me give you the, uh, just a, a, a little inkling of the way in which I handled it. Okay. Okay? 
I said here, um, that was to the, to the general manager of, 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 of Keeblin Wireless, all right? Um, uh, he, he was saying that I should be able to give him an extension of the license, and I said no. So I said here, in both your letters to me, you have made mention of the Prime Minister agreeing to commence negotiations on the extension of the license. I wish to indicate that you have misunderstood the position of the Prime Minister. You should have realized by now, from the previous encounters, that the question of cable and wireless license via extension is out of the question in the current environment. First of all, the objective conditions that existed at the time of the negotiations of the existing licenses have changed completely and so the main elements of the current license are no longer relevant at the dawn of the new millennium. We must endeavor to close close the chapter of colonialism and neocolonialism awesome. and start anew as co-equal partners. For example, the issue of exclusivity can no longer be applicable in the dispensation due to the concerns of the W2O, etc. So I had to put him in his place, basically. And that's a very strident letter. To oh, well, the, I, I can give you the whole details right. of the letter and so on. But it is, it is important uh, that people must realize the problems that yeah. we went through. Yeah. To, break, to break, break that monopoly. To break the thing and so on. And, and also laying the groundwork for the public policy that would inform policy, what would later become example, the regulatory yeah, uh, authority. Right. But I wanted to home in on the level of service afforded in an environment no, but, where you have but, a monopoly. There's not exactly a di well, diversity they took in terms advantage. of... Take, for example, of the, 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 the normal flat rates and so on, yeah. right? Well, we would tell them, look, well, let us get a flat rate and so on, okay? And they were still going to give us these trunk lines. Take, for example, you're making a call from Castries, from Grosile to Castries. You pay the trunk, trunk call rate. Yes. Now we need to explain what a trunk call is. Well, you, you see, you have... Generation Z might not understand well, what that is. Well, you see, in the old days, yes. you had a system whereby you had telephone operators. So if you had to call to Viewfort, you had to call from Castries to Denry, and, and then it would the be operator, relayed. and then you relay, and so on and so forth, right? right? Okay. So you're paying for that relay service? So you're paying for the relay service. Mm -hmm. But with modern technology, the thing was automatic. So there's no need for you to have any trunk. There was no operator in Denry or in, in Miku and so on to put you on to view for. So it's akin Neither to making an overseas call. Ca Just imagine playing a trunk call from Castries to, Gro to from Grosile to Castries. So we are taking advantage of. And it's akin to playing a, an overseas right. call. Well, well, the overseas call is a different. That's a different. Uh, that's a different. Um, right. um, but in terms of the rate, that is, it was an well. The, well, it was extraordinary, extraordinary. But we got them eventually to to, to things on. So one of the first things that we had to do was to eliminate this trunk call business. Mm -hmm. okay. So eventually they gave us a flat rate and so. Ambassador Leiber, the same thing existed in St. Kitts? And yes. how did you manage to break the, the uh, monopoly of cable and wireless? Um, for us, I guess it was expiration of a license that was not yeah. renewed for you. You said uh, another licensing agreement was... Up to 2015 yeah. and we had to. And that's why we depended, depended um, on St. Lucia and all the others coming together. Because while we have a united front, mm -hmm. We were on ball in going forward in breaking the monopoly for the OECS countries. I want to say it's a similar thing, but um, ours was like St. Kitts, um, Chunk Call, and Nevis. Mm -hmm. St. Kitts and Nevis, we had that. But I want to say that when we reached the point in, in the negotiations where um, they recognized that we were very serious about breaking the monopoly, um, they then push forward a figure that each country should pay if we wanted to break the monopoly. <laughs> and that was about $485 million per country. $485 per country. million. Dollars. 
license. Yes, because you see, <laughs> the, 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 license, the licenses, the agreements that they had with the old government, yeah. the old government yes. said at the end, if, if we yeah. as a country wanted to end yes. that agreement, that, we, that exclusive agreement, yeah. that we had to pay them yes. and pay them a whole set of money. 485 million, larger than some, some economies and in some respects, oh, the yes. budget. Exactly. Oh, yes. exactly. So um, we um, listened to them <laughs> and we decided to find a strategy in going forward. Um, I know in St. Kitts and Nevis, um, I reported back to my cabinet and I said, look, this is what Cable and Wireless is saying to us. Um, St. Lucia is 2001, but we have to go all the way down to 2015. What can we do? And I said to the cabinet, look, what I would like to ask is that the Prime Minister um, support an audit of Cable and Wireless. And so we did. And then what? We brought in a forensic auditor from Canada, and we associated him with the Ministry of Finance directly in Inland Revenue, and we were able to carry out that audit. And what would it reveal? <laughs> well, it was where, at the end, we were cable and wireless or St. Kitts and Nevis, over $20 million. And if they owed one cent, the agreement is broken. And that was That it. was the easiest way in getting there. So these were the seminal events that will eventually yeah. lead to... Uh, well, let's take a break. Yeah. Are you watching this special interview? We're talking about the advent of the modern telecommunications sector right here in the OECS, the Organization of Eastern Caribbean States. That includes St. Lucia and St. Kitts. Our special guest, Sir Calix George Sr. He is a former telecoms minister here in St. Lucia. Joined also by Ambassador Cedric Leibold, former Minister of Telecoms over in St. Kitts and Nevis. We'll take a quick break. When we come back, we'll talk about the advent of the Eastern Caribbean Telecommunications Regulatory Authority as well as the National Telecommunications Regulatory Commissions, which uh, sort of regulate the uh, sectors in the various territories in the OECS. We'll be back after this quick break. Quand nous seulement nous ça fait timide les nous pas quand nous seulement messieurs chaï la ca pli lou sans aider nous pas kay sa veille les nous vinn ensemble quand qu'on mine nous ça accomplisse tellement en pile en pile en pile les vie santé et sécurité qu'il fait à si oui qui tout simplicien qui a joué une bonne qualité de santé, qui a pu, qui raisonne. Ce n'est pas un nick en taxe ou ça. Ça, c'est investissement nous en occupation de santé, tout simplicien. Ensemble, nous avons fait tant qu'il y a venu plus mais, côté occupation de santé, c'est un droit tout simplicien mérité. Welcome back to this special interview. We're talking telecoms. I'm Winston Springer Jr. Our in-studio guests at the GIS Studios in Castries, former telecoms ministers, Sir Calix George Sr. of St. Lucia, and of course, Cedric Leibold, Ambassador Leibold, former telecoms minister of St. Kitts and Nevis. Before the break, we spoke about the precursor to the Eastern Caribbean Telecommunications Regulatory Authority, that is ECTEL, which, regula which regulates the telecom space right here in the OECS. Uh, Sir Calix, um, before we went to break, we were speaking about trying to break that monopoly of cable and wireless. Mm. And what drove you as a then minister was what you viewed as the exploitation of that consumer market in the OECS. Well, I, I understand you have some stories to tell. I will, I will give you some details on why I had to break it and we had to break it because we exploited. Now, you remember that I told you there was no... Um, uh, unit dealing with telecoms, okay? And so I had got Suku. And Suku did some research, and we did some research. I being a, a researcher by profession, that's right. my, what I did all my life. I set up uh, a research unit. 
And I had Suku and Barrymore Phyllis here as his assistant. Barrymore Phyllis here is now the PS in agriculture. And so we went down and got information on why it was that we really had to break up things. And I, I'll just give you some idea of Go it. Go ahead. Okay? Cable and Wireless um, uh, uh, financial statements for 1997, which is the year we, we got in office, worldwide showed a total profit of 1.2 billion pounds sterling, serving some 20 million customers, a profit level per customer of 60.62 pounds sterling. Compared with the Caribbean, where there were total profits of 194 million pounds sterling from a customer base of 850,000 persons, a profit level of 228 pounds sterling per customer, 228 pounds. That's a profit in the Caribbean. In Dominica, in 1997, they made 224.7, almost 25 million pounds with a customer base of 19,200, thus giving a profit level of 308 pounds per customer, right? The latest figure for St. Lucia showed a level of 56 million EC dollars, all right? Um, with a customer base of about 35,000, just giving a profit, a profit level of a customer of $1,600 per customer or £364 sterling per customer, right? So that small consumer market producing all that profit? Right. So the profit levels per customer in the Caribbean was 300% higher than that generated worldwide. 300% greater than the whole world. A small market. A small market, the Caribbean. Small population. But listen to that. Limited economies of scale. The profit level per, per customer for Dominica and St. Lucia was over 400% higher than the international figure. 400%. It is all it's worth noting that the Caribbean region with 855,000 customers or 45% of the whole of cable and wireless customers base generated 16% of, of cable and wireless's uh, profit levels internationally. So there's no question about it. That there's no question forward. about it that we were being exploited to the extreme. Mm -hmm. All right? So we're going to open up the market. We, we, we're moving past. Don't you ask me the reasons why. Yeah. So, I mean, there's no reason. There's no, there's no doubt about there's it. There's no doubt about it in right. my mind that I had to break that kind of exploitation. Of things. Poor people, you're taking right. advantage of poor people in the Caribbean. You know, the levels of rates and so on, three and four hundred. Astronomical. Higher yeah. than the world average. So we're moving past. Okay, let us go. Let, okay, so we got that. Oh, so, and so now we have Let's to talk about the incipient shoots of Ectel. How do we get to okay, all right. And good. the environment in which today we enjoy the, this smartphone in my pocket, being able to, to utilize that, being utilized being able to use a number of suite of services, including the call centers, yes. uh, the broadcast space as well, because that also led to the revision of the Broadcast Act here in St. Lucia yeah. in, in the year 2000. Yeah. We, we, um, uh, we, we finally um, uh, had a whole series of, of meetings yes. with them, you know, because we were very serious about breaking that monopoly. Uh, and then we had passed, I told you, we passed the acts. Yeah, the, you know, the, the, the various acts and the various and so on, the the yeah. things and so on. But we still had to negotiate with them. And their position, um, very haughty, um, <laughs> saying that, look, 
you'll have to pay us a certain amount of money to terminate the, those, uh, a lot of money. I think my, um, Sidrid talked about the previous it. Previous yeah. Right. Okay. So we said no. We couldn't agree to that. So eventually, um, we came together as a unit. The, 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 let us put it that way. The, um, the negotiations had broken down after a period of time. Okay? Because we were not taking anything. As a matter of fact, at one time, I got blows from Rick Wayne and so on, where I called, there was a, a woman, a lady, who was the lawyer, Cable and Wireless. Now, you know, in the same kind of slavery thing, you have those people in the... So I, I had to refer to her as a house slave. You're not one to shy away from controversy, I not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm, and, and, and I, didn't, I didn't go back from categorizing her. I want to bring ambassador. Because it's typical, it's a typical, you, you, you in a, you in a, in a, a plantation slavery type of situation. I want to bring where the, where the dominance, you. where, the, where the, they're dominating you, and you're supposed to take whatever they give you. But obviously you, you, you want to make some changes, so you have your intermediate house slave there to assist <laughs> you and so on and thing, you know. Ambassador so I Lyburn think, in a more yeah. tempered um, no, tone. No, but I, I, must <laughs> say that, I must say that uh, when I call her that, um, my prime minister, in fact, the night before. Any regrets about that? Do no, no regrets. But the night before, my prime minister. Um, that would be Dr. Kenny Dr. Anthony at the time. Anthony, um, who, in fact, was the lecturer of that lady because she had done law at you know, UWI and so on and so forth. And then Dr. Anthony, um, Dr. Anthony, told me to go easy and take it easy and right. so on and so But the situation was such that, uh, I, you know, right. I, couldn't, I couldn't take it. So I called her that and so on. <laughs> so I, um, I, 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 I had to go to Dr. Anthony and, and, and of course, apologize. Right. Okay, and he was very generous and so on. You took it back. Uh, you apologized took, took, for uh, I unfortunate apologized statement. Yeah. To Dr. Anthony, my boss, right. my, my, my prime minister. And this minister. is written history. That's yeah. my prime minister. Right. Uh, but the point about it, we got over it. I got support from fellas like oh, yes. Ambassador Leiber. That's why I wanted to bring him in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 But what, uh, for me, what I, I saw during those times was really a united front um, among the ministers. And as I've said, um, the prime ministers were able to support us. However, on the other side of the negotiating team, we saw quite a bit of changes in their leadership. You remember that? Oh, yes, yes, yes. And we yes. saw Jamaica at one time. Someone from Jamaica came in as chair and okay. others because they recognized that the monopoly was coming to an end and they were trying. They, jo they joined. Yes. They, 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 they so got I, on board. I, so I to want speak. to say that we did a very, very good job. And that's why I always support the OECS because we were and always will be, I hope a strong united force. Yes. And without this, we don't get uh, the Hellenites, we don't get uh, Digicel coming into that market, we don't get a certain customer choice in terms of which phone no, provider you want. if we didn't do that, you, right. you would not have got that. You would right. not have reached um, and I'll come to that in a while. And you don't um, get what today we have a certain democratization of our media space. You mm. wouldn't have that no, if you, you, wouldn't if have you didn't have the groundwork for... But for as, 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 as he said, they call on resources. Kim and Wallace used the of outside yes. when they couldn't crack us. Yeah. They brought fellas from Barbados, for example. There was a Clark. Yeah. Clark. I can't remember. I was Trevor Clark, I think. Is it? But he was a cable and wireless yeah. man, big man. Yeah. So they brought him down to, so, you know, to try and soften us and so on. Um, that didn't work, of course. Um, Clark. Um, Clark. Interestingly, um, Clark thought that he would be able to, you know, come and talk to me and things. And Pacify or switch. Because he happened to have been a cousin of Hilfer de Turbel, who was my good friend and our advisor, our legal advisor and so on. So all kinds of tricks, right? Okay. And then finally they had to bring down um, Miller, Miller yes. from Jamaica. Okay? okay? Miller was a big man in Cleveland Wireless, the big director of Cleveland Wireless. Are we talking about then the, the, the Miller was intrigue Miller. of the negotiations? Yes, yes, yes. And Miller... Miller's wife was Portia Simpson. Okay, over in Jamaica. In Jamaica. 
Right. So you see the level at which they think. Right. But that didn't work. So eventually, let us put it that way, eventually we got them to agree yeah. to most of the conditions that we had laid down. That they would not get an exclusive license, all right? That we will not pay any kind of termination. <laughs> that all the OECS countries will terminate on the same date as St. Lucia. Yes. In fact, the whole thing came to an end seven days after the St. Lucia yeah. um, termination date was due in, in 2001. And so we got everything together. Now, having got that, we then had changes in the rates. You know, um, people were able to bring in new things. The new, we, we got new, new, new service providers. Yeah. Both AT&T came, AT &T in. came in. AT&T came in 2003. Yeah, right, right. And, Digicel. Um, and Dennis yeah. O'Brien yeah. from um, Digicel. I Ireland, yeah. yeah. yeah the, from Ireland. Right, right. Now, um, again, <laughs> it's, interesting, it, it's interesting as you say that, Ireland. I'll give you a little story. Um, uh, Dennis O'Brien was an Irishman, right? Right. I had been trained, my whole education, right, had been... Uh, more or less uh, nurtured by Irish guys. We're talking you know, about the brothers. The brothers. The brothers and by that we're referring brothers. to the St. Mary's so College no, Catholic no Order of the Brothers. Yeah. In my, you know, trying to assist the, the Irishman to get a license and so on. So anyway, that's how Digicel got their license. They got a license. AT&T got their license and so on. And then they started to give... Yeah. You remember AT&T 518 and so on, right, that kind right, of, right. Uh, those numbers, the artistic right. the numbers. The assigned numbers. However, in having the, Kibla West having the structures, right, in existence, the physical infrastructure, the, you couldn't have new companies come in and put in additional infrastructure, so they had to connect. Right. So there's the whole question of the interconnection. Right. All right? You had to... They had to interconnect. So the first set of interconnection between that was another. between Well wow, this thing is Digicel. We'll have to have a five part series. Digicel, on there. Digicel <laughs> and Cable and Wireless. Right. The English and the Irish. Right. Boy. Oh. Blows. Right. So they couldn't agree. So they called Dr. Anthony and myself to come to think. Dr. Anthony and myself spent two days and two nights negotiating. in the hotel negotiating or trying to get them to negotiate get or some to compromise agree or concessions. Or in terms of the interconnection right, right. and so on. And boy, if you heard expletives between the English and the Irish, you wouldn't, uh, but you wouldn't believe it. If we didn't have that, we wouldn't have what we have today. No, in no, terms no, no. If we didn't, um, eventually they had, um, Kevin Rice had to agree right. at the interconnection rates and so on, you know. But these are the kind of the intricacies that, that had to occur before we actually get, uh, could get Digicel to operate. When we first started... Because Digicel what? had to be competitive too. And if they were going to carry up the rates for Digicel to get hooked into the system, mm -hmm. it was not going to be competitive for them. And, I, and, I'm, and I'm thinking it's the bedrock of all capitalist-driven yes. market yes. democracies. Yeah. The market will decide. Yeah. That's and right. then that's what you were fighting for, yeah, to yeah, decide. Yeah. Yeah. You could have consumer, a monopoly. Consumer you could, would have that choice. You could no longer have a, a, a monopoly. Right. You, know, right. you had to have... And that would be antithetical yeah. to any sort of democratic, right. capitalistic, market-driven yeah, yeah. philosophy. Yeah, yeah. So, that is, so, th that's, so that's, that's the situation. That's how... Um, uh, well, the, uh, the new, the new, a new yeah. prov service provider came into, 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 into the system. And we have the regime that we have today. And we have the regime that we have today. Um, um, I must say, though, that um, uh, I personally have some um, concerns about um, both the NTRCs and, uh, and, and, Ectel. and Ectel. Because what we did is that in the regulation of the new system, each country had to have a national telecommunications regulatory commission. commission. Okay? Mm -hmm. And then you had Ectel the as overarching the umbrella. Overarching, yeah. Right. right. Uh, there are certain things that, in terms of the issuance of a license, it had, Ectel had to give it 
the, you the know, go ahead. The go ahead. All right? Although it was the minister that would sign the eventual right. license right. at the national level. Right. But the, these are the relationships between ECTEL and NTRCs. Okay? Mm -hmm. uh, one of the things that we did, for example, <laughs> one of the things that we did, Cedric, yeah. the payment of the license, what, bef what happened before? Cable and Wireless used to do all their things, and at the end of the day, say their profit was so and so, and then they give the government a few dollars. Okay, we say, no, 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 no. You've got to pay your license fees. And your license fees must be paid on your gross revenue. Yes, yes. Not your net. That because, still exists today. Well, I hope that that <laughs> continues because the day it goes back, and that's why I'm putting it out right now to the NTRCs and ECTEL, that they must never go against that principle that we established. Right. Yeah. Because that is the money from the gross yeah. that you're going to get to run both the NTRC and Ectel. Okay. Okay? And the day you see that that is, um, you know, go, you go back to the original thing, right. the, the exploitation will come back. So, 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 as far as I am concerned, we must keep that thing. Yeah, yeah. good. Agree. Yeah. As I've said, yes, that um, for us, if Ectel is going to make sure that carries out the whole um, liberalisation, um, we have to make sure that the the revenues are collected because. If that does not happen, the doors of Ectel and the NTRCs will be closed. Closed, yes. I want, to start, other... I want to start from the beginning because I think we have to, to wind things down mm. and why we, where we are here. Mm. Um, like we said from the outset, Ambassador Leibold, your appreciation for the roles that Calix played. Yeah. I understand that you have a special yes. presentation to make to him yes. right, right here. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, but before the presentation. Yeah, go, ahead, go ahead. Before the Where's presentation. Alex? Um, uh, in terms of the uh, Ectel NTRC thing, one of the things that we did was that we had what we call a, a universal mm -hmm. service. Yeah. The fund, universal services fund, yeah. Right, yeah. Which is for uh, people in communities that cannot and, and so on. Yeah. You cannot, you cannot get, get that services. service. Yeah. You prop that you up prop through them, that fund, yeah, right. yeah. And that fund was also a certain percentage of the gross revenue as well. From, from the license uh, Right. Fees. The providers have to, every provider, mm -hmm. right. whether it is Digicel or whether it is Cable and Wireless. I do not know to what extent. The regime you set up was one where it was self-sustaining, whereby it's the revenues from the licenses right. would right, help right. those who are marginalized on the fringes okay. and at the same time sustain the regulator. Right. Now, we were... We were um, forward-looking yes. in terms of the things that would go into the Universal Service Fund. Fund. And allowances have to be made because technologies change yes. and things yes. change over a period, of, period time. of time. And one of the things recently that I thought should have occurred was when the government uh, was introducing uh, the laptops and Program, the, yes. you know, internet services and so on for schools, mm -hmm. all right? As far as I was concerned, this should be paid by the Universal Service Fund, fund so that the governments wouldn't have to pay for supplying the school children, you know, with because children, that's the education of their children, all right? Mm -hmm. The education of the kids the new formulated, new digital world and so on, they have to be okua. Right. So when they told me that they were doing something about how they're going to pay some and then they're going to pay another percentage, and so I said, no. Mm -hmm. The governments should have insisted, yeah. right, that, you know, the Universal Service Fund. Is. Now, even if it did not express that particular type of thing at at that time. At that maybe time. That, maybe you had men the language. That, that is correct. So you now that. have to, as far as I'm concerned, That's you have opinion, to go. Yeah. My opinion is right. that you have to go 
and probably specify okay. some of the mutations that should go into the universal service um, fund. Okay. okay. It's basically a recommendation to all the present um, OECS communications and telecoms ministers. They really now should be looking at this and um, update their legislation to include all of this because, as was said, this is something now new um, in order to make sure that this fund also provide for those laptops in the various schools. In St. Kitts, we provide laptops for all of our students. And um, we believe that what is needed now is in the same environment, which is the, the buildings in the school, you should have the internet services. And that fund should really be providing for that services. So another, so another thing too is that the, the new ways in which they teach. Yeah. And the incorporation of the smart classrooms right. and the, yeah, the yeah. digital smart technology. Smart classrooms and also, all that, as far as I'm concerned, should, should move should, into. Should, in yeah. that, yeah. should so dovetail into remove, that. Yeah, okay. because you talked about it's basically a telecommunication space you're yeah. dealing with, really. That's right. You understand? Right. And so the government shouldn't be able to, 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 to bear that brunt when you can actually get it from uh, uh, the thing. So There's asking. one thing, though, um, in, in, uh, one thing, though, I wanted to think in, in terms of the new thing. A lot of people still call me and complain these days about the rates. There seem to be some increase in the rates and so on, and their bills go up. Yeah. And, and the question but of... But I guess it's driven by the market, driven by inflation, yes. driven by... Data, data right. change, data into the thing, and so on and so forth. Now... I do not know. It's adjusted for inflation. No, no, but no, 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 it may be that. Some of it, some of it, I'm not some, making I'm a not case sure, for but what, what I am not, I'm not, uh, what I'm concerned about mm -hmm. is the way in which the providers are giving you packages, yeah, packages where they bundle things and so on. So I do not know to what extent those bundles are really fair. And I'm not sure whether the NTRCs and Ectel are going into the belly Taking this, a closer look at closer how they look at, right. formulate or the, come up the, with these come up with um, packages. Those or, right, that is correct. You know, so that is that something is, um, which I think that... Need warrants attention. Yeah, that's what, that's what we, we set up um, the NTR season Ectel to do. Right. To look into all these kinds of things, wherever you have changes in terms of rates and so on. How did you come about to tell me that if I have, you know, so many right. minutes... You know, you give me so many minutes and so on. So. And the other thing too is also... And you want to uh, as well get the some transparency in that right, process. Right, right. And the other also one, the, the, the one is the question of uh, prepayments and so on. Right. You know, that kind of thing. So there are a lot of new things that are cropping up as you, as, as, as you go along. And Ectel and so on, I, I'm hoping, will do the policing that is necessary. As a regulator. As a regulator. Right. Yeah. As we said, we wanted to start from the beginning. So... Let's go back to the beginning, why we were here. Yeah. Uh, was Ambassador Lybird, we, for Sir Calix's, I yeah. guess, his efforts in laying the groundwork yes. almost 30 years ago. Yes. And what we enjoy today in terms of the liberalization of a market and the democratization of a digital and telecom space in the region. Well, as we said before, um, it's out of the efforts of the former ministers of telecoms why we are seeing um, the influx of all of these telephones. Um, we now have telephones where persons are now carrying two phones. And this is as a result of the hard work of Calix, myself, and uh, the other ministers in the OECS. And uh, as was his deputy before, I thought I should come to St. Lucia and make this small token of appreciation to him that I wish to do that now. This um, you might have to hold it up aloft. Reads, yeah. um, I, I will turn it when I finish. Mm -hmm. Presented to, and I'm changing the word from honorable to sir, Sir Calix George, for your leadership and invaluable contribution to the liberalization of telecom sector in the OECS during your chairmanship and tenure as former Minister of Telecoms, Telecommunications of St. Lucia. And it comes from your stream. Let's hold it like this. It's okay. Thank you. Thank you very much, um, yeah. um, um, Cedric. Yeah. 
I also wish to thank you really for um, making me have two consecutive terms as chairman of ECLA. Yes, yes, yes. Um, yes. Um, Cedric was very, very adamant yeah. that I should have, I was the first chairman and he was supposed to be the second chairman, right? Uh, but he insisted yeah. that I have two terms. Yes. So I need to talk to, to congratulate and to thank you very much. For yes. That. Thank you. That was the kind of leadership. And I want to that. give you, and I want to give you um, uh, 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 my latest book, yeah. which is on my, on my, uh, Good. on my alma mater, yes. Saint Mary's College. Thank okay. you. Yeah. You will be getting another book later on, and you too. Um, uh, There's another release in the world. Yes, so. I'm writing my autobiography. Wow. And my autobiography will deal with a lot of these issues and so on in more detail, like the cable and wireless thing and other, and other things, you know. Yeah. Um, so when it comes, then you'll be getting Thanks. Them. Well, Sir Calix, yeah. Ambassador Lybird, Sir Calix, it's been a pleasure. Um, faithful and dear friend of my dad, and I'm honored to be here to conduct this interview with you two gentlemen. And also want to thank you, the viewers, for tuning in. A special look at the telecom space here in, in St. Lucia and the rest of the OECS talking about the advent, the hard work that went into ensuring that some of the services that we enjoy today in a more democratized and liberalized yeah. telecom space, we all enjoy that, but hard work had to be put into getting to this point in time. I want to once again thank our guest, Sir Calix George, former telecoms minister in St. Lucia, Ambassador Cedric Leibard out of St. Kitts and Nevis, a former telecoms minister. I am Winston Springer, Jr., Signing off from the studios here at the Government Information Service in Castries. Thank you very much, cousin. Thank you very much, cousin. Bye-bye. <laughs> Thank you. This is Nation Beat, a panel discussion series on matters of interest to you. We go beyond the headlines and sound bites to bring you in-depth discussions on everyday issues in politics, the economy, climate change, health, justice and security, entrepreneurship, youth development, innovation. The panel, the discussion, an objective and impartial view of the issues of interest to you. Nation Beat on NTN, cable channel 122, also on YouTube and Facebook. Join the conversation.